What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is Backtrack Cinema. My name is Jason, and welcome to my 31 Days of Horror. And today's topic, guys, is my favorite slasher film. The slasher genre. You know, it's great. So many slashers. The golden age of the slashers from 1980 to 84. That's when Friday the 13th took off. Halloween kind of being the movie that kind of got the ball rolling. And I'd say the grandfather of the slashers is Psycho. For me, anyway, that's just an opinion. But there's one slasher movie that just means a whole lot to me. I watch it all the time. It's a very comforting movie. And that is Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Is it the bloodiest movie? No, it's not. But it is a ton of fun. And it is really is a great slasher. And am I talking nostalgia a lot? Probably. Probably. I know a lot of people say this takes too much of a comedic turn. And you're right. It's, it's horror comedy, man. It's fun. It's a blast. It has action scenes in it, for frick's sakes. You know, the when they smash up the, the RV and all that, and there's a car chase in it and all that kind of stuff. Just love Jason Lives. And the reason why is it was my gateway to horror. It's my very first horror film that I watched with my mom. I can remember one day I was kind of under the weather. I remember staying home from school, but it could have been after school. And we... But, you know, in the 80s, you could rent movies at variety stores and stuff like that. I don't know if you, you can still can. And the the Jason Lives VHS uh, box set box there, you know, with the, the mask and the light coming out of the mask, just mesmerized. I said, I want to rent that. And she goes, that's a horror film. You sure? I go, oh, yeah. And we watched it together and right away. That freaking opening, man, that Frankenstein homage, you know, Tommy going to dig up Jason and he gets struck by lightning. It just, that sets the tone and what we're doing for the rest of the movie. We're having some fucking fun with this one, man. And they do. They have a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. But when it is kind of, there is some actually good uses of tension throughout the movie. Like when he kills Paula, when he's falling her through the window and everything like that. And it does have some great kills like the sheriff and he breaks the bitch's back in half. And prior to that, you know, they're in kind of like he's trying to blast Jason away and Jason just keeps coming and coming. But yeah, they did a really good job. It doesn't have to be bloody, right? When you hear every bone crack on the sheriff and everything like that, it's just pretty fantastic. And continuing the story with Tommy Jarvis is just is just great. You know, that's Jason's nemesis, right? Another thing they did in this movie that I really enjoyed that doesn't get enough credit is how they built the lore up, expanded the lore. When Tommy figures out, well, I got to contain him. This is a curse. So he's got to go back to where he drowned originally at Camp Crystal Lake. And I, I love that. I love how Tom McLaughlin brought that in and understood that, you know, there is lore to this. And there there really is like Jason being a revenant. And when his mom died, that brought him back. And they're kind of like containing him. And Vincent DeSanti kind of expands that with his Never Hike Alone series, right? So... I like that he he branched off from this movie. And another thing in the movie really does well, and all the other Friday the 13th movies before this, we got, we didn't really know Jason was there. Jason was in the background. No one knew he was there, even until you freaking got killed. And he pops up at the end where we know he's there. He's coming back to the camp. There's a lot more motives than just Jason killing. He's He's on his way somewhere. He's going back to the camp. What's going to happen when he gets to the camp? The camp has kids at it now. Holy shit, is he going to kill one of these kids? It's like a ticking time bomb, you know what I mean? That's what the movie kind of feels like. It's one of the few Friday movies that did that. And yes, New Blood went back to just the stock and slash, even though it took, you know, there was this girl with powers, made an adversary for Jason. But I just love that part about Jason Lives. You get a lot of fun characters in this movie. You know, like Sissy, she's great. Megan's great. Megan's like modeled after uh, someone from the 40s or 50s with real snappy dialogue and real sarcastic. And she's hot as fuck. She's fun. You know what I mean? She's not terribly. I wouldn't say she's the greatest final girl because Tommy kind of handles everything. But she does go after and save Tommy at the, the end of it. Megan was a ton of fun. I would have loved to seen this character return at some point. So it is a real personal movie for me because it was my first movie. I watched it with my mom. My mom's been gone for like 10 years now. So it's just one of those movies. I kind of like Cujo. Whenever I watch it, I kind of think of my mom. Like my mom there watching it with me. It just brought brings back 
a lot of memories and that's what movies do right that's why they're special so nostalgia yeah nostalgia is very heavy with this movie if it wasn't there i'm sure it's not as good as i'm making it out to be <laughs> but i know the friday fans a lot of them really love this one this is always top tier man i mean the guy who did the sound design here went on to do the matrix you know what i mean they had some really talented people involved in this movie and cj graham man i i mean I, a lot of people don't talk about him as much but he's fantastic man he really is a good jason a lot of people call him the home depot jason but man he you know he moves like the terminator he's like as soon as he comes out of that grave man he's he's power walking man he's punching freaking hearts out of people and he's these are, this is the kind of jason like we're not running from this jason no more once he gets a hold of us we're getting our arms ripped off. You know what I mean? This is a, ter I call him Terminator Jason. He's like the Terminator, the way, he, the way he walks and everything like that. It might be my favorite mask too. I thought they did a great job on the hockey mask in this one. And Jason lives. I just absolutely love the mask in this, you know, part three is iconic. You know, part four is like the same thing, but with the accident, part six is mask. I, I really, 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 really like it just has everything for me. It checks so many boxes, a great Jason, Good kills, you know, kids at the camp, Jason going back to the camp, sticking to great lore. It's fun. It's like an action movie, a horror movie, a comedy. You, you can just take this with you on a desert island and you get something out of it. So many different genres it's playing with. And I, I just love Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. And it's a very good watch in black and white if you ever get the chance. The, my editing software here, I'll put it in black and white and watch it sometimes. It's, uh, Pretty fantastic. So love me, Jason Lives. But what about you guys? Let me know in the comments what you think about Jason Lives. Do you like it? Don't you like it? Is it too comedic for you? Is it not? Let's have a great discussion as we enjoy 31 Days of Horror. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I will see you next time, and I will see you in the movies. Yeah.